Welcome back to the greatest hits here on BLTV Extra. Any cruiserweight in the world cannot take my power. Any heavyweight in the world definitely can't take my power. On today's video, we look back at the blockbuster career of one of the hardest punching heavyweights Great Britain has ever produced. A sniper fighter who used his superior athletic ability and astute counterpunching mastery to score some of the most destructive knockouts in modern boxing history. Oh, what a punch, what a delivery. The former two-weight world champion with a 93% KL rate, David the Haymaker Hay. It's gonna be about speed and power. You know, it's one thing I've, always, I've never lacked. An emotional, borderline unhinged fighter, both in but primarily out of the ring, Hay was a provocateur who knew how to cook up a spicy grudge match. A short career stacked with memorable battles. BLTV presents the legendary power of David Hay. Let's go there! January 24th, 2003. After an explosive amateur career packed with knockouts, Hay became a must-watch sporting figure as he began his professional journey on the BBC's terrestrial television network. He's the man in the middle. David Hay's got a low left hand, but he's so relaxed. Well, wonderful. Just about two years ago. Unlike most novice prospects, David showed great composure, accuracy, and shot selection, breaking his journeyman opponent down with maturity, which opened up space to allow his venomous right hand to find its home. David Hay commanding from the centre of the ring, another great right hand there. Oh, that was a terrific shot and a couple more. Again, being a little bit, oh, that was wonderful by Hay, I was about to... Oh! Uh, Mickey Van, I think, has seen enough. Uh, Zari was never going to win this. He was uh, cutting up quite bad. Hay got his man out of there with a right hand straight down the pipe in the fourth and final round. And work on what? Um, I think I got shot hit with that three punches here, so hopefully I can minimize that. Hay's first hostile fight came on January 21st, 2005, matching up with the cockney tough man Gary Delaney, who had built a reputation as a hard puncher in his own right. My name's Gary Delaney. I'm old school. I was brought up the hard way. This David A, I call him Pretty Boy. Well, he ain't gonna look too pretty when I'm finished with him. He's getting right up my nose. Well above the cruiserweight limit, where he's rated about 40 in the world. It's a good brisk start by David Hay. Real dedication, light heavyweight champion. When he was at his very peak was perhaps his best weight. Good solid body shot by Hay. Bigger man. Lovely shot. That was a great right hand by Hay, and again. And he just took his time, and uh, Delaney stepped backwards and dropped. Delaney, now past his best, offered little in the way of offense as Hay picked off his man at will with a wide variety of shots. To the punch, the younger man, Hay, and that's good work by Hay. Oh, that's lovely stuff by Hay. Good, solid left uppercut came right through the guard of Gary Delaney. Good shot. What a peach. An absolute peach. It's been stopped, I think. I think it's been stopped. I don't think Delaney's going to go on. That was an absolute gem. Delaney may have been past his best, but he was a veteran that no one came close to beating with such ease, both before and after the fight. You know, there was nothing wrong with that performance tonight. That was a classic four or five round performance. That's what you get in this business. 10 and 12 many, many times. That was a wild swing there from Kelly. Very, very unsure of himself. Nice. Oh, lovely right hand, beautiful oh. shot. The former world title challenger, Glenn Kelly, who had only lost twice in his career, one being to the great Roy Jones a couple years prior, looked completely out of depth against the lightning quick Hay, who took him apart inside the opening few minutes. By David Hay, fighting this time. You can go on that jab. There it is. He doesn't have to worry about that. He can... The tiles come in, and Kelly has been stopped. And this is the most impressive piece of boxing Hay has produced. An unnecessary count as Hay knocked the daylights out of Kelly with a knockout of the year contender right hand straight through the guard. And he knew that was going to come and there was nothing he could do about it. What a punch, what a delivery. And it worked, worked. I don't think there'd be hardly anyone in the world if I land that sort of punch that could take it and come back, you know. So I'm just pushing and working up the rankings until I'm uh, number one in the world. Hay took a big step up in class on December 16, 2005, squaring off with the hard-punching European cruiserweight champion Alexander Gurov, a man coming off 19 straight knockout victories. Hay's never been past four. Gurov has never been past eight. It should be 
explosive at 14 knockouts in his 14 wins. David Hay all within four rounds. The only time he's been the fifth. He was knocked out, but a right hand falls Alexander Garov. There's the power of David Hay, a Christmas cracker. 30 seconds is all it took for Hay to make the boxing world take note that his power is as legit as it gets. Wiping out Gurov with his textbook pawing jab straight right hand combo, skyrocketing his world ranking next to the title holders in the cruiserweight division. There were no soft touches as David Hay challenged the number one fighter in his division, Jean-Marc Mormick, in his first attempt to win a world title at the cruiserweight limit. So we'll see what happens. Guido Cavallari gives the finest 200 pounds, that's for sure. Digging body shot by Hay. Mormick hasn't opened up at all yet with his WBA, WBC cruiserweight championship of the world. Hay started fast, but Mormick was solid and never looked phased as he stalked Hay across the ring. That hand not again. You watch for it. Sooner or later, this Mormack has got to pick this up. Oh, and he hits him with a good shot, and he hurt him. Hit him with the right hand, and he's down. He caught him with the left hand, and then he followed it up with the right. A shot to the equilibrium stunned Hay, leading to the first knockdown of the fight. Mormick, being the aggressive pressure fighter he is, tried his best to follow up and find the finish. But Hay had just enough defensive prowess to see things out until the fifth round. The Union Jack flag of the UK and he catches Mormack with a left hook that time. There's the left hook upstairs. He's thrown more headshots in this round than I've seen. Was a, not to take anything away from Joe Kelsey. Loads up the right hand. He caught Mormack. Nice uppercut. Once Hay recovered, he started getting his own shots off, which notably started taking its toll on Mormack down the he line. And a vicious blow. And his David Hay caught him with a couple of pretty good shots. Vicious body shots. Well, he's landed that uh, right hand power shot to the body throughout. Now, Mormack starting to get hit, and down he goes! Mormack may not be able to recover from this! He really blasted him! It's all over! David Hay! Hay put Mormack out for the count in round seven, becoming the WBC and WBA Cruiserweight World Champion, leaving few competitors that the fans would view as a legitimate threat to his crown. And we have a brand new WBA, WBC Cruiserweight Champion of the World! March 8, 2008. While David's time at Cruiser was clearly coming to an end, he couldn't move up before taking on his fellow domestic rival, Enzo Macrinelli, who was in fine form, starching his opponents while defending his WBO world title. The fight started out as a bit of a chess match, both fighters finding their range with the jab, but these guys were both risk takers with an exuberant amount of power. It was only a matter of time before someone forced the issue. Hay steamrolled Enzo in the second round, becoming Britain's first and last cruiserweight lineal champion. But now it's about, I've cleaned up this division now. There's no, there's no more challenges left for me at cruiserweight. Come on the big boy. Hay welcomed the big boys as he ventured to heavyweight on November 7, 2011. Still, I don't think even he envisioned the almighty size and weight disparity upon his move, as his first crack for world title honors came against 320-pound, 7'2 giant Nikolai Valuev. Valuev wasn't the most nimble heavyweight, to put it mildly, but upon re-watching this fight for the first time since it aired live, I have to give full credit to Hay for making Valuev look more of a bumbling oaf than he really is.
Hey, boxed in spurts, under strict orders from Adam Booth, counterpunching in his trademark sniper fighting style throughout. From a defensive aspect, it was quite simply a masterclass in hit and not get hit, as Hay used every inch of the ring to evade what grew into his spirited offensive efforts from Valuev as the fight grew more and more in the Brits' favor. Hay rocked the Russian giant in the final round, which gave the crowd something to cheer about, helping toward a wide decision on two of the three judges' scorecards, resulting in Hay becoming the second man ever to defeat Valuev in his 50-plus outings as a pro, snatching his WBA title along the way. When I was a little baby, I said I'd be the heavyweight champion of the world, and uh, today my dreams become true. And here we go. How much does Ruiz have left? Oh, what a Hay came out all guns blazing and knocked Ruiz down with what was now revered as the most dangerous right hand in the sport pound for pound, particularly in the opening stages of the contest. That was 14 years ago, he's in massive trouble with another right hand. That might be crucial, but he did, it was a rabbit punch. Well, look at his power here, he's feeling the Hay power. This is an ex-cruiserweight. the man who keeps bouncing back, but my goodness Harry, he'll have to bounce back in this fight, he's starting to do it, lands with a right hand and then punches out to the back. The fears of Ruiz looking for an easy way out for a quick payday were put to rest as he overcame a savage opening round and even dished out some of his own work over the next few minutes. However, Hay was on fire, desperate to wash the sour taste he left in many fans' mouths after his chess match with Valuev. But Ruiz, John Ruiz has to think I can't take too many look at those. I wonder did he come here for the pension job? No, he's here for the title. Lovely punching from here. Speed. There's another one. The good roll from here. Lovely oh, shot. And he's down again. He's claiming it's another rabbit punch. Oh, no. He should be signal. Another right hand. Obvious signs that he's given up on. Oh, what a big right hand. Ruiz gets credit. He was taking a beating in there and would have kept on going if it hadn't been for a smart intervention from his corner. I enjoyed the fight, I enjoyed the crowd, and at no stage in that fight did I feel like I was losing, but I know my adrenaline was pumping, and I got the job done. Now their most recent encounter disgraced their sport and led to one of them being banned. There's something about British boxing beefs that hit different. From the days with Eubank and Ben, right up until recently with Frotch and Groves, domestic scraps for world honors always seem to generate an incredibly volatile atmosphere. The amount of people that come up to me in the street saying, wait, when are you going to fight Derek Jasor? Everybody obviously knows what happened in the press conference when I had to beat him up in front of everybody for threatening me. You want to fight me? With both fighters coming off losses to each of the Klitschko brothers, both Hay and Chisora were at a menacing low in their careers, hell-bent on punching each other's lights out to regain their position as the number one contender in the heavyweight division. And um, I thought I taught Derek Chisora a lesson when he came over to me and tried to assault me. But obviously not. He wants to get um, knocked out in public and he wants to get paid for it. So, you know, I've, I've given him that opportunity. After the absolute chaos during the fight buildup, it was a miracle that we got both guys in the ring in one piece. Fortunately, on July 14th, 2012, the bell sounded for one of the most anticipated grudge matches in British boxing history. Ten rounds, this first round could be absolutely key. Oh, good luck to have from Chisora. He said he can't afford to let Hay get into a rhythm and stack up rounds early on for Derek Chisora. But he does have a cast iron chin. No love was lost as both guys goaded each other at the end of the first, which in turn sparked the slugfest that was about to ensue. Lovely sharp right hand. painful mess to lay, but he lays a lovely mess. Chisora getting into range, now they go toe to toe. Look at this, good job from Chisora. Oh, big right hand again from Chisora. Now back to Hay. Over the boxing class and Hay is prevailing. Oh, big left oh, hand and right. Tremendous shot from Hay. Left to right hand and Hay and Chisora down. 
Chisora's pressure fighting was starting to get to him, but it was ultimately his downfall as the former champ caught him with a flush left hook out of nowhere to turn the tide. Chisora made a good account of himself, but he was walking on a thin tightrope trying to slug it out with a puncher as murderous as David Hay. In retrospect, Hay's career still feels like a what-if story. He had all the talent in the world and achieved a great deal in a short amount of time. Still, questions about his dedication to the sport were raised from day one, and after the journey was finally over, you wonder if he would have fully applied himself, could we be talking about an ATG as opposed to a talented puncher with a few memorable nights. So I'm just pushing and working up the rankings until I'm uh, number one in the world. There's no question that injuries plagued him, and the talent pool at both heavy and cruiserweight during his prime left limited options and desirability for him to fully accentuate the fruits of what his talent offered. What a punch, what a delivery! Either way, it's been a fun career to look back on, and I hope that you enjoyed today's retrospective on a British boxing icon. Until next time, this is BLTV Extra, signing off.